Hi, uh, this is Dr. Kang's Scuba Diving Stories. Uh, today I want to talk about diving and diving related hearing loss. Um, this is not a common situation for sure, but still it happens. So we need to know why and uh, we need to uh, act accordingly. This is uh, again my dive website and quite a number of questions on diving related hearing loss. And um, this particular uh, search was about uh, perilymphatic rupture. We'll talk about it later. Um, so we'll talk about how we hear and uh, what kind of situation do we have regarding diving related hearing loss, the cause and possibly the management? Uh, here's the uh, layout of the uh, structures of our ear and hearing. Uh, this is the picture showing um, External auditory canal. Uh, this is tympanic membrane. Ossicles, oval window, and uh, it goes in, and the energy comes back out through the round window. So, uh, oval window and round window together make up the uh, inner ear. Uh, then. The auditory stimulus will be transmitted to the auditory cortex through eighth cranial nerve, which is auditory nerve. So this is how we hear. So what kind of hearing loss we have? We have conductive hearing loss, um, which is from external auditory canal, tympanic membrane, then ossicles. Sensory neural. Sensory is about the inner ear. Neural is about the cranial nerve, auditory nerve. And then when the hearing loss is central, it's a, it's a complete loss of hearing. And a part of your brain taking care of the hearing is either dead or dying. And there's a mixed form of hearing loss mixing any combinations of this. So diving related hearing, how can we have problem of hearing during or after diving? So let's go from the external auditory canal. Uh, most frequently it is um, earwax, uh, and then the sea water will come in and they mix and they become very wet and it's clogging the, the ear canal as well as the tympanic membrane. Uh, my good friend, Bob Lang, he had this problem very often. Would come to my clinic for free <laughs> medical care. Uh, you can feel ear fullness. You can uh, have hard of hearing problem. The management is you keep your uh, external auditory canal hygiene, uh, removing the wax. You really need to be very careful. You better go to the hospital and let your doctor take care of your wax. Uh, hope you can see this clearly, but uh, this black stuff is clogging the tympanic membrane so you cannot hear very well tympanic membrane eardrum if you ever have a problem with your hearing because of tympanic membrane that can be uh, perforation or rupture um, either uh, because of the squeeze or reverse squeeze on either case, the tympanic membrane can rupture. Uh, 
if too much uh, stress uh, or stimulus is uh, given to the tympanic membrane, it swells up like uh, blisters um, and then uh, bother your hearing. Sometimes when you have a very serious um, equalization problem and let the negative pressure in your middle ear stay long, then middle ear effusion or if the situation is very bad, bleeding can happen. That will make you feel very difficult to hear. Um, when your eardrum is ruptured, uh, this one is okay tympanic membrane, but it shows clearly that it is uh, ruptured. When it is ruptured by trauma, there usually is a lot of blood around the ruptured TM. Uh, and then ossicles, it's attached to the tympanic membrane and goes all the way down to the ovar window, can be injured together with the tympanic membrane, but it's extremely rare. I, I certainly have seen a couple, but it's very rare. And then comes the inner ear. If there's any inner ear hearing problem related to diving, it can be over window rupture, round window rupture, um, both of which can give you perilymphatic fistula. Um, I have another presentation just explaining the round window rupture because over window does not rupture readily but round window certainly ruptures um, relatively often and give you sudden hearing loss. You also have inner ear decompression sickness which uh, will bring you to hyperbaric chamber. Um, and then we have a sudden hearing loss which has nothing to do with diving but it can still happen underwater because it can happen anytime, anywhere, to anybody. So let me explain a little bit about sudden deafness, sudden hearing loss. This is idiopathic, no unknown reason, almost always unilateral. Thank God. If it happens on both ears all of a sudden, that means you become deaf right there. Uh, mostly disease of inner ear. There are more inner ear problems than eighth cranial nerve or brain. Um, like I told you before, it can happen anytime, anywhere, and to anyone. Um, may accompany tinnitus which is uh, like a hearing loss and a vertigo, dizziness. This is an emergency in otolaryngology part, ENT. This is an emergency case. Just think, if it happens bilateral or it happens to your one side this time and if and it, this is not cured, and then if the same thing happens on the other uh, side of your ear, that means you become deaf. So um, it is a good idea that doctors, ENT doctors, take care of this like an emergency. And whenever we see one of them, we, let, uh, we ask them or force them to come into hospital, admission, and uh, do all sorts of things. Uh, usually take minimum five to ten, uh, seven days of uh, uh, treatment protocol. Uh, when treated properly, admitted, and do all kind of things that doctors do for sudden deafness, completely uh, complete recovery comes to one third, partial recovery to one third, and the other one third 
it never comes back. So this uh, character here, this is the deafness in Chinese character. And funny enough, that's like this is dragon and this is year. So I didn't know dragon was deaf. Uh, there can come some uh, neural and cortical hearing loss, which is a uh, uh, cranial nerve and auditory cortex. Uh, if you have any cage, cerebral arterial gas embolism, they can give you cortical hearing loss, uh, some stroke, other than cage. Uh, well, strokes can happen on the water. So uh, today I talked a little bit about uh, diving and uh, related hearing problems. And what we have to uh, remember, uh, no diving when you have cold, no diving when you have equalization problem, and to avoid inner ear decompression, stick to your no decompression limit, and control your ascent rate and make sure you do the right safety stop for all diving and uh, thank you very much it was uh, diving and hearing and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon thank you very much